I just recorded a couple of videos uh, showing how to design uh, a clawfoot walking mechanical toy in Fusion 360 and I realized I didn't really explain what a clawfoot walker was. So this is a clawfoot walker. It just, uh, just a little walking toy. These are the gears. This is very similar to the one I'm designing in the videos. Not exactly like this though. These are the components I'm going to use. The Lin 20 gear motor, the switch, battery box with three AAA batteries. So I wanted to put this in the front of those videos I just recorded to explain that. This video, or probably more than one video, is going to be about uh, designing a clawfoot walker toy in a Fusion 360 or Fusion as they call it now. Uh, I've done a little preliminary work already, mainly this file right here, which has a battery box or a representation of the size of the three AAA battery boxes I'm going to use, the N20 motor that I'm going to use, and the switch I use. So we'll hide all those. We're going to start out by making a sketch just at the top level. This is just going to be basically for uh, reference. I'm going to select that plane. We're going to draw three circles to represent the gears that we're going to use. This will be the motor gear. These are just the other two will be the gears that have the, uh, the uh, legs connected to them. The cranks, I guess you would call them. We're going to dimension this gear as uh, 20.3. The reason for the dimension, these gears will be modular one metric gears with 20 teeth. All three of them will be the same. The point three, the 20 comes from the pitch diameter of a 20 teeth modular one gear. It's just uh, the modular times the number of teeth. The point three is just a little extra clearance. So we're going to set all three of these uh, circles to the same size of our equal constraint. Now I'm going to draw some circles to represent the outside teeth. Zoom in on that. And the uh, basically the gear profile. I think it's called the root diameter. So let's dimension those. This is the root diameter and it's 17.5. I look. I used a gear creator to get that. This is pretty easy to get without a, any math. It's just going to be 22. The number of teeth plus 2 well, for module 1. Let's, let's turn these into construction just to make it easier to look at. So this is our pitch diameter, the outside diameter of our gear, and the root diameter. Let's draw these same circles up here. Uh, there's a reason I'm doing this. It's so I can do a little layout ahead of time. Let's make that X, that X, make this equal to this. What happened there? Twenty point three, yeah. Let's make make this equal to, let's grab the wrong one, and make this and this equal. That's right. Now I want to make the same ones down here. We'll convert those to construction by hit, selecting them and hitting X. Okay, so there's our three gears represented. Now we're going to place them where they're going to go in the final design. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to be all three in a line. In a line. I could use the, the uh, tangent constraint to make them butt up to one another, but I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm just going to draw a line that connects them. I'm going to make that line construction. Now I want to dimension that line. Right click and hit a line so that it's in the right uh, orientation. Now this is going to be 
for these gears, it's going to be 20.3. To, to get that, you just do the pitch diameter of one gear divided by two plus the pitch diameter of the other gear divided by two. In this case, they're both the same, so it's going to come out 20.3. And we'll just make this line and this line equal. Now, we could move these around all over the place if we wanted to. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to make them all three in a line. So let's just make that line. Suck that line and make it vertical. Same with this one. If we look at our sketch, it's fully defined. I'm going to put the... Uh, first, let's go up and make some uh, parameters. We're going to make a parameter called uh, stroke. This can, we're going to give it a dimension of, let's say, 6 millimeters. I think that'll work. We can change that later. We're going to make another diam or parameter called screw clearance. And we're going to make it 3.3. That's if we have to have a screw hole that goes all the way through. And another one called screw thread. And we'll make it 2.9. That's a hole that a screw will, 3 millimeter screw will thread into. One more called a screw head. Clearance. We'll make that 7. I don't think it has to be that big, but we'll go with that. We can change it later if we have to. Okay, so we've got these three basically variables we can use in our uh, dimensions. So we're going to make a circle up here where our, our crank is going to, or our arm is going to, leg, I guess, is going to uh, mount to. We're going to dimension that as a, uh, let's make it, We'll, we'll, do, we'll use our uh, screw uh, thread diameter. Although this is not the, the, the sketch that's going to drive it when we, when we make that. Uh, we'll make a line from here to here. Make it a construction line. And we're going to dimension that. Right click aligned so it's in the right orientation to stroke. And let's just make that vertical because that'll probably make it easier later. Let's see your sketch is fully defined again. It's really not that critical on this sketch, but it is later when we're actually using them to make parts. So these are our three gears that we're going to use. There's there'll be a pole down here also, but I'm, it's not necessary to put that in. The reason I'm putting that in now is because I have a gear laid out. We can see how big it is on the outside. We can see the, how deep the tooth profile is going to cut, and we can make sure that this hole is not going to interfere with that tooth profile. Otherwise, the hole might actually cut into the tooth profile. That would not be good. So let's call this sketch good. We'll come back to it later. So finish sketch. Now we're going to make our gears actually do something. Let's turn that off. We're going to go up here to uh, Utilities, Add-ins, Scripts and Add-ins. All the way down to the bottom is our gear creator, spur gear. We're going to run it. We've got metric gear selected, 20 degree pressure angle. Module is going to be 1. Number of teeth is going to be 20. Backlash. Uh, We'll use point two just so it, none of this stuff gets too tight, hopefully. We have to make the root fillet radius less than 0.59 according to that message, so let's just go with 0.5. Our gear thickness is 6. That usually works out well. 
and the hole in it's going to be three millimeters although this is going to change later but it'll be there for reference so we have a gear I want to I want to chamfer this gear all the way around we're going to use this gear for our other gears too so I'm going to start out by chamfering it before I will do a little something later to uh, so that they don't all three look the same so uh, we selected our gear come over here to solid I want to make a sketch I want to make it uh, here we're going to project in by hitting P this body what we're going to do is we're going to uh, I'm going to turn this off. We're going to make a profile that we're going to revolve around and cut a chamfer on this gear. So we'll draw a line here. Come back up and pick up our midpoint. Do the same thing again. Let's need to zoom in on that. We're going to make a line from where those midpoint or where those meet to a midpoint over here. On, okay, on now line. we're going to. Uh, and we're going to turn our this motor to on. Instruction. Set it as. We're going to bring in our motor and we're going to match this. Gonna we're going to link this gear to this motor. We're just going to uh, use this as our start, the motor as our starting point, basically. So, we're going to right click on this to select. Okay, now we're going to uh, turn our motor on. We're going to bring in our motor and we're going to match this. We're going to make this gear to this motor. We're just going to uh, use this as our start, the motor as our starting point, basically. So, we're going to right click on this to select it, move copy. We're going to do a point to point move and we're going to, the origin point is going to be that and our. Uh, Target point is going to be that. That didn't work very well. Let's do that again. First of all, let's let's uh let's move copy. <coughs> Go up here and just uh, do a rotation on it first, so it gets it more in line of where we need. We'll come over here to the side. Turn it 90 degrees. Now we're going to select point to point. Uh, Origin point's going to be here. Target point's going to be here. And I think that looks right. Looks like it's lined up. Capture position. Okay. So we've got our mirror gear made to do the end of our shaft. Now, this gear we're going to have to do some modifications but before we do some modifications we want to make a copy and we want the copy to be new so that the changes we make to this gear for the motor will not affect our other gears so what we're going to do we're going to select it pick copy get off of it right click paste new then we're going to move it we're going to move it up, uh, should be 20.3, 20.3, I got a microphone in my face, I can't see anything, and we should be able to uh, revolve it to make it mesh up better, well we don't want to do that, we want to leave that one just the way it is I think, okay let's go with that right there, now let's move this one to revolve it. Uh, right click, move, copy, revolve. I'm going to pick uh, that. See, I can't remember what the number is. Uh, eight or something like that. Eight. Nine. I could do a math, but that, that'll work. So that's rotated in the right place. Capture position. Okay. So now we have two of our gears. Now we want to make uh, a copy of this. Now these 
gears. We're going to put shafts on them. So, uh, this gear and the, the gear down here will be identical. This one's different. So, what we're going to do is pick this one and we're going to copy it. What we can do is just uh, do it this way. There's a lot of different ways to do things in Fusion. Move copy. We're going to uh, translate. We're going to hit create copy. By the way, you have to hit, hit create copy after you choose the move type you're going to make, or it'll, that little check mark will go away. We're going to move this uh, C 20.3 and 20.3 is 40.6. I believe that'll put us in the right spot. Creating a well, that's just a silly error message. It'll go away. Error message. It'll go away. I believe this is right. Looks right. So why is it not letting me click that? Minus 40.6. I must have had something entered wrong here. Okay. Now we have our three gears, hopefully in the place they're going to be in the final design. Now, I think what we need to do, uh, we're going to make a frame for it. We're going to make one, no, uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's try to make a frame. I'm going to sit here and think for a minute about how I'm going to do this, and I'll come back. Okay, I've thought about it. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want my battery box. I'm going to put the battery box, uh, let's move, copy that, where's it at? the rotation of it. Rotate it 90 degrees. We'll bring it over here. Where's it at in relation to our motor? I think I'll line it up with that motor. Mostly with that motor. Yeah, that's close enough for now. The reason I did that, I want to know how much room I need for all this stuff. So this is, we're going to have our gears. Our leg's going to be running down here with our foot down here. Our battery box is here. Hopefully that'll work. Won't be too far off balance. I did that to know how wide to make the frame. We're going to go in now and make the frame. Whoops. So go up here, new component, and call it frame. To make the frame, I think we're going to make a sketch on the face of that uh, motor. So let's uh, isolate the frame and just bring in the motor. That might not be a good idea, though. Nah, it'll work. Capture the position of that battery box, I guess. We're going to project in uh, that face there. We're going to uh, see. Let's 
bring it. A, so this is up. This is down. It's good to know. We will make a little cup here that will hold our motor. So offset. Turn off the tangent. Or chain. We'll offset by uh, 0.2. This is just the clearance. Right click, repeat offset, same thing. Just only this time 2.2. Minus 2.2. Apparently I didn't pick up the right thing. Let's offset. Huh. 2.2. Hmm. Worked that time. It just doesn't pick up one of these line segments for some reason. Now we'll do a line here. And here. This will make a little. We'll make a little cup for our. Uh, extrude that. We'll extrude it. Uh, let's just extrude it to the edge of our battery box. To object. New body. Actually, let's edit that. We'll select that object, and then uh, we'll go distance. It's already got that 36 in there, so let's go 36 point uh, point six. That'll give us some clearance for our battery. And actually, we want probably two millimeters on each side of that. For so, let's go 40.6. Minus. That'll give us room to make uh, little walls to hold that. We can change that later if we have to. Maybe not easily, but well, we'll see. So here's our that's our little cup that's going to hold our motor. Let's make a sketch on the front of that. Let's bring back in our gears. Turn off that battery box. Let's uh, make a little rectangle. Not what I wanted to do. We'll dimension this to. Which in that line to just make it 60. We will make, let's project in that let's turn those gears off real fast. Or that gear off. We'll project in this geometry. We'll make Well, let's just use our midpoint. That to that. It'll center that up on there. Let's turn that gear back on. And we'll dimension. Uh, you can see I'm just making nips up as I go, basically. But it all works out in the end. That's one of the reasons I'm showing to do this. It's, you don't have to be a genius. Or at least I'm not a genius. Sketch is fully defined. Let's project in. Uh, let's go to let's change that to I want to project in that circle. That circle. And uh, that circle. Let's 
Now our shaft's going through. We're going to make the circles for them now. For the cutouts for them. The shafts will be 8 millimeters. So let's make these uh, 8.3 for a little clearance. Same thing down here. We'll just use our equal constraint to uh, make them the same. Okay. Let's finish that sketch. Let's isolate it. Uh, we did have it isolated. What have we got on at uh, spur gears? Now, let's uh, do some extruding. We'll extrude this out two millimeters. It's not what I wanted. I think I'm going to have to go in and edit my sketch a little more. I didn't get the profiles complete. Thought I did. Let's try that again. Yeah, two millimeters. No, I didn't. I'll draw a line from here to here. From here. From here. Trying to pick, make sure I pick up those uh, constraints. Okay, now we can uh, do our extrude. Two millimeters. Bring our motor back in, see what that looks like. So that's what we want or not. We might as well go ahead and change that sketch so we've got our what motor will butt up against it. So let's do that. Let's uh, isolate that. Or on ice. Yeah, get rid of that motor. Let's make a uh, circle off here. Let's make it uh, eight millimeters. We'll draw a line from here to here, from here to here. Make those tangent with these. Dimension this. Thought I did, but I didn't. Eight. Mm, let's try that again. Let's unisolate it. Go back up to our top level and see what it looks like. So we got a motor sitting in a trough, and a plate over here. I think that'll work. We may want to move these gears and this motor over to where there's only like a 0.4 millimeter. Let's measure the distance now. With an eye for inspect. And here we're two millimeters away. So if we move all that stuff 1.6 millimeters, it'll give us 0.4 millimeters of. Uh, We need to get them in their final position before we do go any further. Well, let's just move them. Uh, let's just move everything. Let's see, one millimeter.
we will move our motor. We'll just leave the motor. No, we need to move it. So we'll move it one millimeter also. Make sure that shaft puts up against there. Now we'll capture the position. Alright. Now we're going to work on uh, work on our frame some more. I'm going to create a sketch. Let's bring in that battery in this one so I know where I'm at. We're going to make a wall here that goes in this way. So, okay. Let's isolate that frame. Select that. Create sketch. Project in this geometry and this geometry. We're going to uh, think that's all we have to do. Well, we could uh, close that one side up. Well, there's no really need to. It might give us some options in the future. We'll extrude this two millimeters. It's the same width as over here, I believe. I think I got that too. You can select something and look down here and see what its dimension is, like a little length or something. So there's our basics of our frame. Definitely not the end of it. Now I want to work on these uh, gears, put a shafts on them. So we're going to select this one. Whatever we do to this gear, since we didn't use the paint new, is going to happen to this gear also. We're going to uh, well, we can do it on this side. Create a sketch. Let's isolate that. Project in that, bring in a circle, dimension it to eight millimeters, our shaft diameter. Now we're going to extrude that. We're going to want it to join, not cut. Not sure how far I need to go yet. We will figure that out in just a second. For now, that's good. Let's unisolate that. And let's see how far it sticks out on this side, and we'll make it the same for the other side. I for inspect. Click that from that face to this face is one millimeter. So we want it to go one millimeter past here. So let's click on that. We're going to go uh, distance to object here with an offset of 1. We have to make sure that's going in the right direction. It seems to be. Now that'll get us to where it needs to be, but we've got to make uh, allowances for We're going to make a little wheel. It's going to be 6 millimeters thick over here. So we'll go add 6 to that. So an offset of 7. That'll give us a place to put our little wheel. Okay. And as you can see, because we didn't do paste new, this one and this one are actually the same part. They're just different instances of the same part. Now we're going to work on the end of this shaft. So let's pick it. Isolate so it doesn't clutter up the screen. Create a sketch here. Project in the geometry. Create uh, polygon. See, circumscribe. Or what is that word? Circumscribe. That's what it says. Hmm. So. Uh, 
Push the center point. And we're going to want to see how much can we get out of this. Let's make that. Well, first of all, we're going to go over here and change this to 4. Because I want it to be square, not hexagonal. And then we're going to tab back to this and change it to uh, 2.5. It's five millimeters across. Okay, so we'll extrude this six millimeters back. All right. If we unisolate it, it should everyone should look the same way. Come down here, and make sure I'm at the end of a timeline. Of all I can see, I am. So now we have a frame a gear, a shaft. We're going to put a wheel on here next. I think what I'll come in and do is I'll make a little if you make a little ring right here so this doesn't rub against this it'll run a little freer. That's what my in in intention is. Right now new component let's call it uh, crank. We're going to create a sketch right here. It's crank is highlighted. We're going to create a sketch right there. Uh, project in dot geometry. I think I'll isolate this now so we can see better. Now let's make a line across here so we make sure we're center on that. Make that a construction line. Uh, Make a circle off the midpoint of that line and see. Let's make this uh, the old, same as our old OD of our gear 22. Now, this gear, this little crank we're going to make, in, we don't want it the same size as the thing we be uh, square on here, so we're going to. Offset that geometry. I'm going to change selection. Uh, point 0.2 seems to be a good number. I think that's all we need to do. Let's unisolate that so we can see where we're at. We're going to extrude this back six millimeters. Okay. Let's go up here to our top level. Let's see what it all looks like now. So we have a gear, shaft, crank. That looks good so far. Let's put those little... Uh, I'll do it over here first. It might make more sense. We want it to be on this side. I'm going to create a sketch here. Project in this geometry. Circle. Let's make it to, I don't know, 12. Sounds good. Finish sketch. We're going to extrude this out. Uh, point, point 0.6, I believe. Let's unisolate that. Let's measure how much room we got between. Uh, okay, let's f need to see that first. Uh, easiest way to do that is probably this. Inspect, inspect from here. To here, give us 0 0.4. That's what I was shooting for, so that's good. Turn that section analysis off. Okay. So far, so good. Let's do that over here to this gear.
greatest, greatest sketch right here. Project in that circle of twelve in of twelve millimeter diameter. And we'll extrude it out one millimeter. And isolate it. Mm. I'm hoping that's a uh, Well, I messed up somewhere. We'll just push this back. We'll just change that extrude to uh, 0.6. I was going for more symmetry, but oh well, that'll work. So we have our gear, shaft, crank, whistle print with uh, this side down. To the bed, uh, same way with this one. Don't see any problems there. You have to kind of think about how you're going to print this stuff when you're designing it. So let's make our holes in uh, these. We'll select this. Create a sketch on this face. We'll isolate it. Project in uh, that face. We want to make a circle. Circle up here. Dimension it to uh, screw uh, thread. Because we're going to thread a screw into the three millimeter screw, and we're going to make a line from the center to there. We're going to make quite a construction line, just just because we're going to make the length of that line come out here. Make sure it picked on a line, and we're going to make that stroke. Now I want this line straight up and down, so like that. The sketch is fully defined, finish, extrude. Distance to object. Eh. Okay, I see I'm intersecting that a little. Well, I think that'll be all right. Let's just cut that out to select that as a, yeah, it'll work. Didn't plan on that, but that's okay, it'll work. And isolate that. Go back over here. It's in our bottom one too. You can see. Now we're going to activate that component. Create a sketch on there. Now I want to make these uh, I want to put these holes in the right place to start with so I don't have to move things around. I projected that geometry in. I'm going to make another circle down here. Dimension it to the uh, to the uh, screw thread diameter. Uh, make a line that ties it to the center point. I'll make that line construction. Dimension that line by hitting D. Make the dimension stroke. Same as the other side. Let's go down here and make sure I'm fully defined. It's just a good idea to make sure your sketches are fully defined. That one's not. What have I done wrong? Oh, I know. 
this line make it sure it's horizontal vertical now we got a lock that would have been critical on that part because you want to make sure we're, we're lined up fair so we're, the timing doesn't get off now we're going to well, first of all let's just uh, isolate that extrude that hole whoops distance to object there okay now we're going to unisolate it we have a crank I believe that it's done let's look at the section analysis from here See if that's what we want. Something looks funny. This extrude. Glad I caught that. What's it look like over here? Looks okay. So we need to extrude that back another millimeter, I think. So our crank. That, uh, which one was it? Let's go. Let's turn on this section analysis again. I'm going to do it under a root component. Should have left it on. Inspect section analysis. Let's see what I'm doing better. Okay. Now we're going to go back under our uh, crank component. Let's just run back through the timeline and we'll figure out where we screwed up. Right here, right at the start. So let's just make this seven. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I screwed up when I did this part over here. I did the uh, shaft on the uh, here so what's the best way to figure up that up let's go back to our top level this is just the way it is you're gonna screw up I know I do I'm gonna turn that off I'm going to uh, turn the frame off Now I want to uh, I want to inspect how far it is from here. To here, point six. I need to cut down on my uh, extrude here by point six. So we just make that point six more, I think. Six point six. And I think it'll be right. I could be wrong though. You can always see what you're cutting by clicking that little down arrow. Now let's go back to the end. looks right now. Let's bring in our frame. Okay, that's good. I think this video is getting long. Uh, you notice something. I moved the timeline when I was back in here. And when I come back to the top level, this will burn you. The timeline didn't go all the way to the end, so I don't want to do that. 
go all the way to the end of your timeline or else you'll be editing back somewhere in your timeline you didn't you didn't intend I've been burned on that in the past so we have our holes now I think we're going to make a copy of this and move it down here and this will these will be exact copies so right click move copy we'll go to the translate create copy Hopefully this will work. Let's see what did I say? 40.6. I want to get this right. This is going to be the same as we moved our gears. 20.3 times 2. So this is the basis of our little clawfoot walker. Uh, I think I'm going to make some joints and get it moving, and then we'll call this video quits. It's going to be an hour anyway. That's crazy. Uh, all right, so we're going to make some joints. First thing we need to do to make joints, we're going to get up at our top level. I'm going to pick this frame, and we're going to ground it, so it, it's going to be like, a, well, the ground. It's going to be what everything else moves in relation to, I guess you would say. And we're going to uh, assemble as built joint we're going to uh, make this component to a frame it's going to be a revolute and we want to we could there's several places we can cut up pick up in here this I think uh, right over here is fine want it to be off that circle there you can see it turning okay now that didn't turn with it you can we go up here to our joints where's our joints at right here it's the only one we got now and we drive it all it's doing is moving by itself you can see down there at the end of that shaft it's not uh, following it so we want to make assemble an as-built joint of type rigid this to this so now when we drive this joint that one will move too now we're going to make a joint from this to the frame so again assemble as-built joint this component to the frame going to be a revolute there okay right click repeat as built joint rigid here to here okay so if we drive that joint hopefully it'll that works all right now we're going to <coughs> make these two Go in relation to one another we could bring this into a mix but it's kind of irrelevant it's just I'm, I'm it's not needed for what i'm doing so we're going to go up here assemble motion link uh this joint to this joint Let's see we're turning the same direction 360 degrees to 260 degrees That'll work. So now, if we drive this joint, they both move together. Nice. Let's turn those off so we don't get in the way of our uh, seeing what's going on. This is almost an hour, so I'm going to call this version of it quit. The next, uh, or this video quit. In the next one, I'm going to assemble, or uh, I'm going to build the leg and the foot. So hopefully, that'll go quicker. Uh, 
I have to do other things. I haven't got any place to mount the battery box or the switch. Uh, yeah, it's a little ways from being done. But this, we're getting the basics down. So I'm going to call this one quits and uh, check and see if my hard drive space is all used up. So thanks for watching this one.